Looking for me to let's go Take me on this journey home I don't wanna wait no Oh, here it go. It's your girl, Erica Vane, and I'm back again with another amazing All-American video. And in this video, I am going to be breaking down episode 16. Without further ado, let's get into it. For the most part, I think episode 16 understood the assignment. It came in and it did what it had to do. It gave what it had to give. Prepped us for episode 17, where we will be traveling to Atlanta ATL, shawty, to visit Brinkston University and HBCU, where Simone will be attending. Um, she's going on a college visit, and this episode is the backdoor pilot to All-American Homecoming, which will be the spinoff to All-American. We start off this episode seeing Simone playing tennis, then we get Spencer and the Crenshaw boys on the field solidifying their place as the contenders for state championship and then throughout the episode we just see Beverly Hills fight for that other spot right in addition at the start we also get peaks of preach now with his daughter I mean I guess we moving forward I ain't see no DNA I ain't see no 23 and me I ain't see no nothing yet preach while you out here just going ahead and um getting your bonding on I'm gonna need some proof some paperwork some something because something in the water is not clean y'all something in the water is not clean but i'm gonna talk about that a little bit later after we get these quick peeks of like previews of what's happening with everyone else we spend a good amount of time with spencer and jordan who are training and jordan is looking like he's back in peak performance he is cleared with his ct um he's had mris his brain is looking good ready to go if this one thing jordan was going to do he was going to muster up the passion and the drive to get back on the football field because now football is life or death for him. So, you know, he, he going to make it happen. And he did. Well, not exactly because Montez still doesn't take him getting cleared by his doctors and other physicians to allow him to step back into his QB1 spot. She's holding out just a bit and come to find out, like, I kind of feel like she was doing a little bit of dangling the carrot in front of his face and like, oh, just do this and I'll let you play. And oh, just do this and I'll let you play. So he puts his pride aside and he helps JJ really push through this game so that they can actually win, even though at the beginning JJ is stinking up the entire joint and after he gives the pep, pep talk to JJ JJ is able to turn it around and you know Jordan is excited and then when he comes to Montez at the end he's like okay great like JJ did it now I can get my QB1 spot back and she's like well you know Crenshaw Spencer and your dad know you a little bit too well so you might not be playing then either and I'm just like sis you knew that before this game even happened like you've always known that so was this always a, a thing where you were planning to bench him even if he didn't get hurt, like that's a little bit jacked up. Montez is giving me good coach vibes this whole entire time, but today that I was just like, all right, sis, you could have you could have led with that, getting this boy's hopes up. Now, let, real quick, let me go back to preach because we follow up and go into uh, preach and his daughter right after we see Spencer and Jordan on the field talking about Jordan getting back and then seeing Spencer have a little bit of struggle around um, his decision of whether or not he's going to go to Toledo State because it's so very far. Um, but real quick touching on Preach, apparently Mo is the mama, y'all. So I was right about that. Mo is the mama. She was hiding the kid for a while. Apparently the kid was only able to find out because Mo returned back because of Tyrone and she put two and two together. I still don't know how she did that. This whole thing just reads something ain't right. Like it almost reads as high alert as Carrie, except for Carrie is outright crazy. And this is very subdued crazy. Like the fact that e that Mo even hid this kid for 10 years, all off the sake of she didn't want the kid around um, gangs, but she moved away. So sis, he was in jail. You couldn't have sent a letter like, oh yeah, you got a kid. Ain't like he was gonna be able to do anything anyway. Like you literally did not tell this man that he had a kid for 10 years for why after a confrontation with mo which is prompted by coop needing to go back on tour and layla not going back to vegas with her and ultimately preach would have to go and i guess that's put some little uh wheels spinning in his head of like oh he's gonna have to travel he's gonna have to be away they need to you know confront mo he needs to get some things clear and straight so that he can keep his daughter in his life but still get out here and work um, again, that pushes him to go and confront Mo. Like, I'm going to be in my daughter's life. You should have told me. We don't really get a lot from this interaction. Mo was very quiet aside from like, oh, I was going to tell you. And this is like, okay, girl, 
I was, I should have, but you didn't. So there's that. And then are you still plotting on Coop? Because you sashaying around the hood like everything is all good. And it's like, either roll out your plan or not so we can get through it and get over it already. Because I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over you and this kid that came out of um, Narnia. I'm over you and plotting on this teenager. Like, I was actually kind of excited for Mo's character when she was first revealed. I was like, oh, okay, this could be a cool antagonist, a cool little spin on the whole Tyrone thing. But now it's just, just getting on my nerves, and I don't even care anymore. Like, I don't know. What do y'all think? Tell me what y'all think about Mo right now. Drop down in the comment section below. Now, aside from us getting a set up of, you know, our Fab Four traveling to Brinkston, going to go visit Brinkston next episode, the other major thing that we get in this episode is the reconciliations that we've been needing. And I called it, y'all. I knew that Spencer and Coop were going to finally make up. I knew that Spencer and Layla were not going to be able to make up. And I called <laughs> Carrie continuing to throw a wrench in the plans between Layla and Olivia. Even though they're not in a horrible place, right? They're not in a horrible place, but she definitely threw a wrench. And let me just say this. Carrie has been had to go, right? Carrie has had to go ever since she rang the doorbell. Carrie has had to go ever since she smiled as soon as Layla opened the dang going door. Carrie has had to go most definitely when she mustered up the audacity to even ask Layla to stay with her. Sis has had to go. But now... And honestly, y'all, I'm really, 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 really struggling with this slow burn because she's another one. It's like whatever you came for, whatever your sinister plan is, get to it, sis. Do not wait two, three, four, five, six, seven episodes to roll out your plan like Miss Mo. Please present whatever it is so that we can overcome it, so that we can defeat you, so that we can banish you, Voldemort, and get the hell. <laughs> like, I can't. Carrie has literally in each episode just been taking little digs. Like it was the little that set my soul on fire. Like her coming over and putting a coaster under Liv's cup and said, just a reminder, you're not at home. Ho, neither are you. Do you have a home? See, I, and I don't want to get super, super disrespectful to Carrie, but I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. At least in this episode, y'all, we did get to see Carrie not only have issues with Olivia and Spencer because we knew that that was going to happen, but she was also kicking up dust from the very beginning when she comes into the Crenshaw Cafe to get Layla and she, she throws up a little shade, a little dust towards Patience and Coop. Like, sis, what is your problem? You're really giving fatal attraction, but you do know you're not in a relationship, right? You do know that y'all are barely friends, right? You do know that you are a stranger, sis. And Layla is just too vulnerable right now. And you happen to catch her at the right moment. Because had you caught her when her and Spencer was still in a relationship, she would have sent your ass packing because she was a little bit still good. The introduction of Carrie has really set my soul on fire. And I don't even know how to process. I really don't. And before I get off of this Friendsgiving, I definitely think that it was really great that Patience pulled this together. Them starting off saying everything they were grateful for. A lot of people were holding back, but I'll take what I can get. Honestly, I am very, very proud of Layla. Spencer tries, and I I just saw this coming. I knew exactly how he was going to do it too, because Spencer, oh, Spencer is so great. I can't. But Spencer tries to apologize to Layla again, tries to talk to her again. She's not ready, but she articulates that she's not ready in the most honest and kind way that she can muster. And just watching that play out, I was like, that's what I'm talking about, Layla. You better keep your dang on growth, sis. You better hold on to it. We ain't going back to Petty Lele. Petty Lele is gone forever. This is only Evolve Lele. This is on to bigger and better Lele's. Like, oh, that sounds crazy. But y'all know what I mean. I was so proud of her in reference to how she spoke with Spencer during that moment and she just told him the honest truth she's not ready yet but they will become friends again they will get to that place but she just needs time and that's all I needed so while they didn't reconcile in this episode they gave me enough to go off of and I definitely think that we'll see the reconciliation play out throughout the course of season four because this core group ain't going nowhere so I'm only going to go get this the spinoff popping but our core group is going to be navigating things for many seasons to come we already know they're greenlit for season four and I'm just looking forward to it and y'all i cannot do this freaking breakdown video without mentioning spolivia 
or uh, the still pending Bolivia. Y'all, I am honestly fine with where they are. They are operating in a really cool space as friends. They are being honest and open with each other. Um, and they're not moving too fast. And I'm not mad at it. So all of y'all little horny toes that really just want them to hop in the bed together and do all this shenanigans and, and whatnot, just cool it cultivate some patience you'll be all right it'll come in due time and once it happens it'll be the right time the exact right time and it'll be some of the most beautiful romantic passionate writing that you have ever seen come up out of the all americans writers room okay i'll wait for that i don't have no problem with that watching Liv and spencer talk while spencer's looking at the state championship while jordan's team is losing was really cool but we get the reaffirming that they are friends and they're in a cool space but they could potentially lead to more just because you know they were giving their Louis bolivia looks and I thought it was cool how they approached Layla and Olivia talking about it. And Olivia makes it very clear to Layla, like, no, we're not in a relationship. We're really just friends. And they don't really talk about it any further. So I do think that when Olivia is ready to pursue a relationship, a romantic relationship with Spencer, I do think that we're probably going to see her approach Layla and give her a heads up. Just by how Olivia was moving in this scene, I just feel that on my spirit. Alright y'all, and that's all I got for the episode 16 breakdown. Let me know if I forgot anything, if I didn't talk about something that you really wanted me to talk about more. I am actually recording this right after I watch the episode. Usually I give myself a little time, which is why the episode comes, my video comes out a little bit later the next day, but I'm trying to get this out as quickly as possible so if i miss something drop it down in the comment section down below and let me know i ain't even gonna go because i already caught myself there is two things that i actually missed and y'all ain't gonna read me for filth in the comment section honey so grace and carter they had their little moment i can't believe i missed this initially because i enjoyed the moments that we saw of them their relationship is progressing along nicely you know that little text message got him in the door and now grace is like you know throwing up signals throwing up signs like you are welcome here sir and i hate to be the one to say i told y'all so again but i just knew little dylan james was going to have all the smoke for carter and he displayed that in this episode i thought it was absolutely comical love dylan two pieces i definitely think that dylan is going to be the one to continue to struggle with carter and spencer's gonna be fine with it spencer is letting bygones be bygones spencer is trying to do better and still realizing his shortcomings in certain areas and uh has been dealing with a lot so again i don't think that he once he actually finds out about Carter I think that he is going to be completely fine with it and just going to be able to roll with it and Dylan is it's just going to take a little bit side note y'all I'm enjoying seeing a little attitudinal uh Dylan I'm here for him he can make a few other appearances and give people a little bit of shade and smoke I'm I'm here for it and then the other thing that I didn't mention initially but is very very important from this episode is that one we're getting the Germone wedding yes and yes y'all I'm still calling him Germone I've been calling him Germone from the beginning I have been down with them for the beginning if we go back to my previous videos y'all was just shading the heck out of me like girl they ain't gonna never last you need to let it go it's just a fantasy this this and that and now everybody wants to ship them and y'all have named them Jimone but I have been calling them Jermone from the beginning and I'm gonna continue to do so somebody tried to get in the comment section yesterday and was like oh Erica it's actually Jimone we call them Jimone y'all call them what you want to but OG Jermone supporters and fans gonna call him Jermone okay and that's just that y'all know what I'm saying y'all know who I'm talking about and you know they some real ones so anyway we are going to get their wedding we know that that's going to be the international players anthem episode uh <laughs> but the key thing about that we see the invitation in this and we get the reveal that Billy and Laura had no idea about it but I think the key takeaway is that Laura actually gets on board Billy's already on board because he ain't trying to lose his kids but or Jordan specifically but Laura gets on board by the end of the episode after she's still throwing up this annulment she's still like we are doing this thing and Jordan had to shut it down like ah, ah. I love my wife I'm not losing my wife get with it or get lost my period and we love to see it and while we're talking about what we love to see I also want to go back and highlight from the Friendsgiving scene or some of the scenes at the beginning after they do the little toast and Jordan is over in the corner dancing on Simone I love old married man Jordan like I really love him I, that's like my favorite version of Jordan and I swear I just I want to hold on to it as long as possible yes if you made it to the end of this video put four football emojis in your comments so I know that you're a real one and you made it to the end and I got to show you some extra special real love if you're new here 
here, I'm Erica Van, and I post new All-American videos every day, sometimes twice a day. You should really join the tribe by hitting subscribe. We talk about everything All-American, and it's so amazing. In addition to my episode breakdowns, I do character breakdowns, I do situational breakdowns, and we talk about it all. Anything that someone notes, they might send me a DM or post a comment. If it's interesting enough and enough people are talking about it, I will make a video about it and broaden the conversation, and we can continue to, you know, dialogue on it. You are not going to want to miss any of my uploads. You want to be a part of the community so go ahead and hit the subscribe button it's the free 99 way to just get in on all this good good community and all of us friends i don't know what you're waiting on if you miss any of my all american coverage thus far you can go ahead and check it out in my all about all american playlist link for you right here on your screen and if you're looking for something new to watch erica van tv is breaking down quite a bit of television y'all i got quite a bit of shows and i think that these two you would like as well so go ahead and get into them tell me what you think and i'll see you in my next video bye